Hello, this is uh, Juggler66 from Hour of the Truth and um, the video that you are about to see was not planned to make this way. I'm currently reading a new book. Uh, in German I did it completely already and in English I'm uh, at, at about the half of the book. And that is called The Secret History of the Jesuits from Edmond Paris. And while reading tonight uh, I had uh, the same, um, how do you say that, the same gift from the Holy Spirit in this English reading that I had uh, some time ago when reading the German part, that I had the urge to inform the people about who the Antichrist is. So this first half hour of this book reading I spent with that subject to tell you that the papacy is the Antichrist. And this is why I'm doing this little short introduction, because you will hear another introduction, as it was mentioned and it was made in the video originally. And as you will see when you, of course, see the reading of the book, The Secret History of the Jesuits, which I'm working on for the moment. So this video is called The Papacy is the Antichrist. And uh, here it goes. Hello and welcome to a new video from Juggler66, Hour of the Truth. I've come here tonight on the 27th of August 2017 to do the next reading of the wonderful book we are reading for the moment, The Secret History of the Jesuits. Yeah, and why am I calling that a wonderful book? <laughs> you know, <laughs> actually, the best thing that could happen is that books like these would not have been necessary to be written because there were no Jesuits, or there are no Jesuits, because there is no devil, because there is no Antichrist, because we are all living in Jesus Christ's kingdom. That would be just great. But as long as we have to fight with the powers of this world, which are not carnal, but spiritual, we have to deal with the problems they cause in this world, on our earth and on our in our lives, in all of our lives. And that's why we have to educate people about the necessity of understanding the past to when you learn from the past you can really understand the present time. And when that gets you to the Bible you will also understand what will happen in the future. And, you know, this movie they brought out at the end of the 1990s, Conspiracy Theory, I think it was called, with uh, Mel Gibson, if I'm not mistaken, and Julia Roberts at that time. Just in time before a few years later, 9-11 hit and the world changed. I think that a lot of people did not understand until the 11th of September of 2001 how many changes this world is going to undergo. But to me, now looking back in 2017 to what happened in 2001, I think that the New World Order agenda really switched over into a higher gear. And a lot of people, because of that higher gear, all of a sudden woke up, you know? It's like this one scene that I... <laughs> I always laugh on when my mother watches this movie Overboard, you know, with Kurt Russell and Goldie Hawn. <laughs> and that mother in the end, when she turns the boat around and uh, and uh, speeds the boat up, all of a sudden she glides out of her bed. You know, a lot of people with 9-11 uh, fell out of their bed, out of their comfort zone and woke up to things. And now a lot of people are searching for the truth all around the world and are led by many people into many different directions. And some tell them, oh, it's the Jews. And others say, oh, it's the Freemasons. And others say, oh, it's the Bilderberger. And it's the CFR. And it's the United Nations. And it's this and it's that. And, well, only diligent study of the Bible, where God tells us who it really is, will lead us to the knowledge that we understand that all the just mentioned, forementioned, whether secret or open societies or whatever, are all 
just puppets on the strings of the Antichrist of the Bible. Therefore, of course, we first have to understand who the Antichrist is. And just this weekend I released a video on my YouTube channel uh, in German. The Pope is the Antichrist, it was called. It was about 15 minutes or something, and that was an excerpt that I did from a reading from uh, this book, The Secret History of the Jesuits. Yeah, you heard me right. I read The Secret History of the Jesuits, as you know, this book in German. And in one of these readings, I was explaining about the Antichrist. Why? Because the week before that, I uploaded a video on my channel. That you also know, because I uploaded that in German and in English. And that was called, If um, Evolution is True, Why Are We Living in 2017? And there were people in German commenting on that video, by, because I was mentioning the Pope being the Antichrist, saying, oh, the Pope is not the Antichrist. I said, well, it's probably a necessity when I read this book, The Secret History of the Jesuits, to inform some people about who the Antichrist is very first. Because there are a lot of people who don't understand it. And it's, it's, it's logical they don't understand, because the whole world has been deceived, as the Bible, of course, foretold. God will send them strong delusion, and he did. And people love to be deceived because when they believe a lie they don't have to think for themselves they believe that that is proposed to them by whatever media persons they trust in politicians teachers uh, friends family whoever it is so much more comfortable to believe a lie than to really go on search for the real truth and the real truth is that Jesus was and is the Christ. He is the Messiah who came and went to the cross for the forgiveness of all our sins, for all who believes in him. And as sure as in the Law and the Prophets, what most of the people call the Old Testament, it was, it was made in there to tell the Israelites who their Messiah was when he comes, especially in Daniel chapter 9. And of course, the whole law and the prophets deals with the coming of Jesus Christ. It starts at the latest point in Genesis 3 verse 15, when God says that he will put enmity between Satan and the woman, between his seed and her seed. And uh, she will crush his head and he will bruise his heel. That is, as, at, uh, at least there, that is the earliest announcement, if not even earlier, but I could be wrong. I wouldn't say dogmatically that is the first time, but that is the first time that I really understood that it is mentioned that there is coming a Messiah. Genesis 3.15 And um, Daniel 9 made it very clear the timeline when Jesus Christ is coming. So the whole Old Testament with the Mosaic law about sacrificial, uh, with all the sacrificial ornaments that they, they had been done, all the sacrifices that had to be done in the temple and all that stuff, that was all pointing to Jesus Christ. Now in the New Testament, we have many, many points that point to the adversary of that Christ. In the Old Testament it was told when Christ comes, and in the New Testament it is told when Antichrist comes. With the same sincerity, with the same precision as in the Old Testament, Jesus Christ was announced. In the New Testament, the Antichrist was announced. The Antichrist, as Daniel described him in chapter 7, is the little horn that comes out of the ten horns into that the pagan Roman Empire will fall. And out of these ten horns arises in the middle of them a little horn. Well, the Vatican is a kingdom. It is the smallest kingdom in the world, only a few acres big. And it is the, uh, the, the eleventh, the little horn, that grows out of the ten. And then we have Paul who speaks in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7, and of course the whole chapter is interesting to read, but just, 
just to get into Second Thessalo uh, Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7, let me pick up my Bible here. I have my Bible here, so I can I can quote that right from the Bible. And I I like to I love to do that as long as I have it really here. Second Thessalonians 2, verse 7: For the mystery of iniquity doth already work; only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. This is a very sure announcement of when the Antichrist comes and where the Antichrist arises from, you know. Because Paul was speaking to the Thessalonians in the time of the pagan Roman Empire. So at the time when Paul was speaking, who led the pagan Roman Empire? The Caesars. Okay? So, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work, because this is already after Simon Magus, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. So that means, in other words, only he, the Caesar, who is now leading this pagan empire, will lead until he be taken out of the way. But Paul couldn't say that in these plain words, in writ. He said this in these plain words when he still was with them. As in verse 5, remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. Paul was clear when he spoke to the Thessalonians face to face, vis-à-vis. -vis. He cannot be that clear in a letter, because if that letter had gotten in the wrong hands, Paul would be accused of sedition, revolution, and all that stuff. Terrorism if that word even existed at that time. But he makes it very clear that when the Roman pagan Caesar is taken out of the way, then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. That means, from the moment on the pagan Caesars are not in power anymore, somebody else will take over that power, that mystery of iniquity that doth already work in the time of Paul, and that wicked that is then revealed shall lead, shall reign until the Lord comes back, because it says in verse 8, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy the brightness of his coming. That's the second coming of Jesus Christ. So it is very clear that he who leads after the pagan Caesars are gone, is the one that leads until Jesus Christ comes back. And because we have in Daniel 2 and in Daniel 7, Daniel 2 with the statue and in Daniel 7 with the uh, four beasts, we know that there are in Babylon foretold to Daniel four kingdoms to reign over the world until the world is going to be destroyed. How and why is the world going to be destroyed? Well, when we just, when we just have a look at, um, at that statue that we can see from uh, Daniel chapter 2. I'm going to put the picture in here, and you'll see that. Let me enhance that a little bit. Then we see that we have, of course, the head of Babylon, the head of gold, which is resembling the kingdom of Babylon, succeeded by the breast of silver, the kingdom of Persia, succeeded by the thighs of brass, which is the kingdom of Greece, which is then succeeded by the legs of iron Rome. The legs of iron, a kingdom divided in itself, and the feet of iron and clay, the divided nations from 476 until the present time. Meaning, in the legs of Rome you had the emperor of Rome, the Caesar, ruling the time of Paul from 168 BC to 476 AD, and then came the same kingdom under the guise of Christianity, the Roman Catholic Church, what we have today, until the, 
the kingdoms will be destroyed by a rock that is not cut out with hands, which is Jesus Christ, who will destroy all earthly kingdoms to set up his heavenly kingdom here on earth. Okay? So, when we see this, when we understand these, only these two verses, just Daniel chapter 2, what you see here, and Daniel chapter 7, which is about the four beasts. Let me see if I can give you there another picture of the four beasts, maybe, that I have here. Uh, this is just the sea beast. Uh, we don't need that. I would need a picture of the four beasts. This is chapter 7. The four beasts of Daniel chapter 7, you know, the eagle, Babylon, the bear, that is uh, Medo-Persia, the leopard, that is Greece, and then the dreadful beast, that is the fourth beast. And when then we take what I just read to you before, um, the um, Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7, we already understand very precisely who is ruling this world, who the Antichrist actually is. And when we then turn, of course, to Revelation, and the Revelation we have several chapters that speak about the Antichrist and explain the Antichrist, starting with, of course, chapter 13, where we can read that on chapter 1, John wrote down from the Revelation, And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw, the, saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and, above, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power, his seat, and great authority. When we then read on, of course, in chapter 17, reading, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast. Ha! Huh. Scarlet color. Okay. Um, scarlet. Do I have a picture of scarlet color? Oh, yes, you bet. How about this one? Bishops and cardinals in Rome. And how about this one? And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and the filthiness of her fornication. Revelation 17, verse 4. And of course it continues also in chapter 18. But I'm not going through the whole Bible now. I just want to make to you very clear that, for example, when you take Genesis 3, verse 15, let me... <laughs> just open that I have the Bible in my hand right right now anyway so I can I can read the exact words that God told us and um, it reads and I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel this is the very first announcement of a savior Jesus Christ coming to save the world the seed of the woman yeah? And then further on, we read, of course, in Daniel. Now I just have to see to open <laughs> the book of Daniel in my Bible here. Yeah? I didn't plan this. And in Daniel, we read, of course, in chapter, 20, uh, in chapter 9, verses 24 through 27, that 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks and threescore and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. So, we have 70 weeks are determined upon thy people, the people of Daniel and Babylon, the Jews. Then we have 7 weeks, and 62 weeks makes 69 weeks. 
and after the three score and two weeks meaning 62 weeks and the seven weeks that preceded those so in all together it means 69 weeks shall messiah be cut off but not for himself jesus christ went to the cross not for himself he went to the cross for us and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with the flood, and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. So, the people that come, the people of the prince that shall come, are the people, the tenth Roman legion, that besieged Jerusalem in 70 AD, and destroyed Jerusalem and the temple, as Jesus foretold in Matthew 24. And the end thereof shall be with a flood, and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. So these are the desolations that we are in. You don't need to, need, you don't need to look for a seven-year tribulation. No. There is no seven-year tribulation coming. Desolations are determined until the end of the war. That war started after Jesus Christ was put on the cross. That war started in 70 AD when the prince, when the people of the prince that shall come, the prince was the son of the reigning Roman emperor Vespasius at that time, Titus. And he came and destroyed Jerusalem in 70 AD. And that end was with the flood. <clears throat> that flood is a tsunami. We still feel it today. All the wars around the world. This is what was Daniel predicted here. And it continues in verse 27, And he, so Jesus Christ, shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. With many, yeah. Not everybody is saved. Grace is through election of God, through selection of God. And those many are mentioned here. And in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and oblations to cease. Yeah, that's it, because after three and a half years after he was anointed, he was baptized in the river Jordan by John the Baptist, three and a half years later, in the midst of the week, he caused the sacrifice and oblations to cease by going to the cross and taking upon his body and his blood the sins of all the world. And for the overspreading of the abomination, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation. The consummation is when he comes back, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. So, we have Genesis 3.15, the first announcement of Jesus Christ, of the Messiah coming to save the world in the Bible. We have Daniel 9 giving us the precise timeline, so that anybody who studied the Bible at that time could know when Jesus Christ was coming. Then we have in the New Testament, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 7 as i read to you about that he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way and of course you have for example revelation 13 so we know precisely who the antichrist is it is the papacy it is the office of the papacy every pope in succession from the very first until the present one and until the very last that will ever reign on these earth is the antichrist the papacy is the Antichrist. There is no other. And the Bible is very clear about that. And only when we know and understand who the Antichrist is, and we understand who our enemy is, namely the Antichrist, the Pope, then we can understand the present and we can make predictions on the hand of the Bible for the future. Now, the point being, since the Pope is the Antichrist and the Pope is the head of the quote-unquote Church of Jesus Christ, as he calls itself, well, the Church of Rome, the Roman Catholic Church, never ever was Christian. Never ever was. So, what's this about? The Pope is the head of the Roman Catholic Church. He is the Antichrist. And he has a lot of people working for him. Satan has a lot of people in this world working for him. Because the Antichrist is nothing else but the personage of Satan. I would like to say the Pope calls himself 
Jesus Christ in the flesh, I would like to call the Pope Satan in the flesh. Martin Luther and all reformers agreed with me, and I guess even the Bible agrees with me, that we can say that. And all these little minions that the Pope uses to achieve his again agenda are in the very first place the people who started the counter-reformation. The anti-reformation. The reformation gave us the freedoms that we know today, and the anti-reformation is going to take all these freedoms away. Look around you. Don't you see our freedoms that our forefathers fought for in all these years diminishing more and more every day? Isn't that easy to see when you look around, especially in the United States of America, with shortly after 9-11 the Patriot Act and then a little bit later the NDAA? Your country is run by executive orders by a president who acts like a Caesar, who acts like a king. He is a king. All presidents, all prime ministers, all kings of this earth are kings. And they obey the king of kings of this world, the self-pronounced king of kings and lord of lords of this world, the Pope, the head of the Roman Catholic Church, the Antichrist, the man of sin, the son of perdition, the mystery of iniquity revealed. There is no question who the Antichrist is. The only question is, will you see it? And when you see it, will you understand it and live accordingly? Choose Jesus Christ and warn your brethren. Because that's what this whole book reading is all about. That's what all the book readings are about that I do on my channel. This is what everything I do is all about. This is what everything Tom Fress does is all about on Inquisition Update. Warning the people of the coming Inquisition because the Pope is the Antichrist and Satan knows he has only a little time and he is advancing his agenda very, very fast. Look at all the changes that have been made from 2001 up to today and then you see what I mean. There's no secret about this. Satan is transformed into an angel of light and therefore it is, uh, uh, therefore it is no wonder that his... Um, that his uh, ministers are also transformed into ministers of righteousness. Politicians. Priests. Pastors of the ecumenical, apostate, reformed movement. All working for Satan. All working for the agenda that Satan can come to fulfill what he announced that he wants to fulfill when we read Isaiah chapter 14. Now let me see if I can very fast open Isaiah. I think Isaiah chapter 14. And there we read in verse 12, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? Isn't Satan weakening, weakening all the nations in this world? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. High. Lucifer says here in heaven that he wants to be like God. And what is the response? What does God tell us? Yet, he says, thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Lucifer gets his goal. He will get his adoration. He will be like the Most High because the people are duped into believing that he is whatever he plays to be. Maybe even the second coming of Christ. And he will get the adoration that he wanted. But yet he shall be brought down to, the hell, to hell, to the sides of the pit, as it is written. 
we don't have much time. And many people will never just pick up a Bible, start reading, believing and understanding. So that's why there are many secular books, like the history of the Jesuits, or the secret history of the Jesuits, which we are reading, oh, I was planning on reading today. <laughs> and these books give us the history, the hidden history, the secret history of the Counter-Reformation, of those people, of that organization that actually works for Satan in that way to take away all our freedoms that our forefathers fought for. And that's why it is so important to read, discuss and understand quote-unquote secular books like the secret history of the Jesuits, like All Roads Lead to Rome, which I read before this and still there are, I think, a few videos that I have to upload. I don't know. Let's see when I upload this. I don't know that. And books like what Tom Fress read, The Global Vatican, Roman Civil Liberty, and so many other books. And right now, in 2017, he is reading Luther in his own words. Wonderful work. Explaining to us from not only the view of Luther, but especially from the view of Luther on the Antichrist. And Tom does a very wonderful job in that. So check out Inquisition Update on that. That is the reason why Tom Press has his ministry, Inquisition Update. That is why I have this ministry, if you can call it that, Hour of the Truth, Jogla 66, my YouTube channel. And I'm doing to reading these books. I'm going to read these books. We must start at the foot of the cross. For our souls in danger, we're at loss. And when we kneel in that awesome place, at that very moment, you'll feel God's grace. Friend, let me tell you, you need to know, there is heaven, also hell below. Christ died on that cross to set you free from your vile sins and hell's agony. You're God's enemy without the cross. Reject Christ and to God your dross. To the prison of hell he will send, just Christ's work on the cross makes amends. God hates those who try to enter in, the gates of heaven still full of sin. Only his son can take sin away, go to the foot of the cross this day. God has provided only one way to enter heaven's wondrous array. Except what Jesus did for us all, he paid our debt so hell won't befall. Go to the foot of the cross this day, his precious blood washes sin away. We each need to think more of his cross, without our Savior, we're total loss.